All right. So we discussed about how to use the um, two models we have for hydrostatics to, to analyze a, a manometer. Um, one of the issues is like we talked about, it's possible, although this is kind of an extreme example, to have multiple different fluids in a manometer and that can make analysis just tedious and error prone when you try to apply the uh, hydrostatic equation over and over and over again and combine equations and stuff like that. Um, for example, in this case, we have gas, water, mercury, and oil all together in a manometer. And we're going to be able to analyze that really easily once we learn a simple manometer rule. So let's talk about it. simple manometer rule. Um, the first rule of this, so the first, <laughs> I guess there's simple, I should call it simple manometer rules, but um, the first rule of simple manometer rules is to start at either end um, writing the pressure down. Um, and remember, if we're trying to do active learning here, this is a great time to try to write this down in your own words. Yeah, I'm writing the pressure down. Two. All right, proceed to the manometer. Proceed through the manometer, adding rho GH if moving to a greater depth and subtracting if moving up. If moving up. You'll note this is the opposite of what you might expect, right? Down is usually negative, up is usually positive. But here, if we move to a greater depth or if we move down, we're going to add, we're going to subtract if we move up. And then three, we can stop at any point, setting the expression to the local pressure. What does local pressure mean? It just means the pressure wherever we stopped, right? So for example, if we were to analyze this manometer and we wanted to know the pressure at PA, we could start at PA um, and we could move through our manometer from left to right, going through the water, through the mercury, through the oil and ending at Y4, 0.4 over here on the right. Um, we could also start at the right-hand side and move our way to the left and end at PA. We could also start at the right-hand side here where we know that it's P atmospheric and end anywhere we want in the manometer. So we could start and end say at the top of the manometer, right here at the top, or here at the interface between water and mercury. And that allows us to easily calculate the pressure anywhere within a manometer, right? All right. So, we want to know what PA is in absolute pressure, right? So we're not going to use gauge pressure here. We're going to use absolute pressure. And um, let's get started. But the first thing we always ask ourselves, what tool, what model do we use, right? Um, in this case, we just learned the simple manometer rule. So we are going to use the simple manometer rule. Um, and you'll note that uh, simple manometer rule still has the same assumptions that the uh, hydrostatic equation has, right? So we're gonna assume um, fluid is static. Another way to say that is fluid at rest, things like that. And then also we, um, density is equal to a constant. And we're also going to neglect gas weight. Um, we can tell by looking at these different 
well, even though this drawing is not exactly to scale, looking at these different heights over here on the right hand side, we have zero to or at the greatest distance we have is negative 0.75 meters to zero, actually. Um, oh, to, to one, sorry. So our, our height is, our maximum change in height is 1.75 meters, which is um, very small, very small. So our, our change in pressure due to gas um, is by necessity has to be small. And, and, and another clue you have is that I did not give you the height difference between PA and the water, right? And so if I didn't give it to you and you know that this is something that you often neglect, it's a good sign you're going to need, need to neglect it. Okay, so first rule of the simple manometer rule, pick a point and um, start there. So I, I know I'm going to be solving for PA, and I know the third rule of the simple manometer rule is to set my expression equal to wherever I stop. So I'm going to make it easy on myself to solve for PA by stopping at PA, and therefore my expression will be equal to it, which makes it I don't have to do any algebra then. I just have to plug in numbers and calculate. So I'm going to start here on the right-hand side. Let's start here. And we know that it is P atmospheric at the start. P atmospheric at the start. And then I'm going to move from Y4 to Y3 through oil. So I am moving up, which means I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to subtract. And here I have... Um, Row oil, which is uh, row oil times G times my height. And my height is Y3 minus Y4. So, um, you know, what? I'm just going to write that in and later we can, we can figure out what exactly what that is. Great. Now we're at Y3. I'm going to go from Y3 to Y2. I'm moving down now, I believe. You should always check just because who knows if this is actually to scale or not. And indeed it is down. So I'm moving down. So I'm going to add, and this time it's rho mercury times G times Y3 minus Y2. Now you'll notice that um, I'm not, I'm, I'm picking the highest height and subtracting the smallest height, right? All I want is the absolute value of the height to plug in here. This is H. In fact, I should probably put just absolute value of H, right? Um, so I'm not doing left minus right or right minus left or up minus down or down minus up. It's literally just the largest minus the smallest. I just want that absolute value of that height. Cool. So um, next we're going to move from Y2 to Y0. Um, you'll note that Y1 actually doesn't matter in this equation because we just want to go from interface to interface. And here, um, Y2 is below Y0. So we're going up, so we're going to subtract. So we subtract rho water times G times um, da, 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 Y0 minus Y2. Great. And that, now we're going to stop, and that's going to be equal to PA pressure that where we're stopping and also the pressure which we're solving for which is great okay so we can do a couple things uh we know that rho oil here is given in terms of uh, uh, a fraction of the density of water this is also usually called a specific specific weight i believe of the fluid um and so we're gonna change this briefly. Rho oil is 0 0.9 rho water and rho mercury is 13.0 times rho water. Great. So now actually we have rho water G on, in front of all of our stuff. So we can combine that pretty easily, right? Um, if we wanted to. And um, let's just plug in all our numbers and then calculate it. So Rho atmosphere is 101.3 times 10 to the third pascals. And then we subtract 0 0.9 times 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Almost always, we're just going to use 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed for the density of water, even though it varies with temperature, it varies with, um, like I said, with pressure and all that other kind of stuff. 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and then multiply by our difference in height, y3 minus y4, which is 1.75 meters. 
Great, now we're gonna add 13.0 times 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.8 meters per second squared times y3 minus y2, which is 1.5 meters. And then finally, we're gonna subtract uh, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.8 meters per second squared times the final height, which is one meter, meter, and set all that equal to PA. And if we plug that all in and turn the crank, we find out that PA is equal to 267.1 times 10 to the third pascals or 267.1 kilopascals, right? Really pretty simple thing to do. Um, yeah, really pretty simple thing to do. Uh, really straightforward is what I should say, right? It's really straightforward. Uh, things that we can do to make this more complicated are, for example, in this diagram here, I gave you Y1, you didn't need it, right? Um, students, uh, I changed the shape of the manometer here towards the end. I could do that in the middle too to make it look a little bit funky and kind of try to confuse you about um, what heights you might need to use, but ultimately it's always just the heights of the interfaces between different liquids that matter, right? Um, because remember, you can only apply the uh, hydrostatic equation, delta P is equal to rho G delta H. You can only apply that within a fluid of constant density. So really what the simple manometer rule does is it does some algebra for you, but it applies in, in series the hydrostatic equation um, between interfaces within a single fluid. So it goes first within oil, then within mercury, then within water. So hydrostatic first within oil, then within mercury, then within water. So that's it. Uh, in class, we will do a quiz, not quiz, about a inclined manometer where we're going to take one arm of it and instead of having it be uh, straight up and down, we're going to put it in angle theta. Um, and we will talk about um, things like sensitivity and how this, um, how changing theta affects the sensitivity of this measurement device, right? Great. Awesome.